In this video, we are going to go over some newer features that Kittle recently rolled out, including a brand new image generator, Seadream 4. Seadream 4 is an image generator that is integrated into Kittle Flows as well as Kittle AI. So we will be testing it out within each of those options, and we will also be going through the new mockup feature. So let's go ahead and jump into Kittle to explore these new features together. So one of the first things I want to do for you guys is I want to show you a head to head of the different types of image generators using this Feral Cousins social club that we did before. We did one with ChatGPT and all we did was this very simple make this design a watercolor style make this design heavy metal and make this design pop art and when we look at this we can kind of tell what chat gpt is like and it does a good job and then over here we use the nano banana image generator with kittle flows and it did a different job that was also quite good but what does it look like when we use the new sea dream image generator and if you have any familiarity with sea dream you'll realize that it's meant to be an artistic model in fact it says it right here i believe refined artistic realism in 4k as you could see it's not the best at following the prompt as compared to the nano banana and the chat gpt being much better at following prompts and providing an expected output. But that doesn't mean that it isn't a good output. It's just not as good as ChatGPT or Nano Banana when used in this exact manner. But let's go ahead and look at this. This is watercolor, this is heavy metal, and this is pop art and it didn't really capture the idea of pop art the way the other two did. So we could definitely use this sea dream in order to make it have a more artistic style but i don't necessarily think that sea dream is the best option for using kittle flows with these types of generic prompts okay so here we are and we're testing it against the welcome to the scare zone template and all we did was we asked for it to be pastel goth and it did a great job of shifting the color palettes to meet that request and making it feel pastel goth, at least in terms of the colors. Now here we have chat GPT and it messed up a few things. It did the right shifts in general. You can tell that it is not maintaining the image, it's generating a new one. And over here with Nano Banana, again, we get color shifting. It keeps a lot of the same stuff, but it doesn't keep the same level as Sea Dream. So if you're looking for a color palette shifter, Sea Dream seems to be a pretty solid choice. So here we are, we've picked a mock-up and I'll show you how to pick a mock-up as well. So all we need to do to add a mock-up is to click the artboard or smart board in this case that we want to add a mock-up to, and then we go over to the side and we click add mock-up. If you click the arrow, it just simply makes another smart board, and that's not what we're looking for here. Now, obviously we can use this flat lay t-shirt mock-up, and we might as well leave it. And we can go ahead and we can add another mock-up, and maybe this one, we will choose a different one. We could do this cup. Okay, so here we've got our three mock-ups. Obviously, we need to resize them. And if we're using this background color, we don't want this big rectangle block here, right? And what we can do to make the mock-up look good is we can do this dropper and we can click this background color. Now, obviously, you need to make sure that if you're selling apparel, that it's the right apparel and that it is the right color garment. And if we have a properly removed background, which is definitely something that is mandatory if you're doing print-on-demand apparel, then the apparel will be whatever color you choose. And you can get these hex codes from the different sites like Printify or other print providers. So let's go ahead and let's 
resize and move this to the appropriate spot. That's probably a little bit too big. It would not print that big on this shirt. Bring it up to the most likely print area. And then once again, we click the mock-up, we change the dropper, and we have a pretty good mock-up. We'll do it one more time here with this cup. Move it down, move it across, and then we can change the dropper to be that background color. So if you're really leaning into using AI images as your primary design elements or your complete design, which is more than possible now, I would just be sticking to creating images with white backgrounds. And if you're on Etsy, like I am, most of your sales are going to be light colored shirts. So if you generate with that type of background, it is going to, generally speaking, work better, it'll mock up better, and it will sell better on that platform. And we will just do one example on the original design, the original template. We can size it up, move it into the right spot. And something that you could do is you can uh, mess with the color palettes, right? So let's click this and we'll say, hey, I don't want to have that color. I want it to be a little bit darker. And then you can do that. And you can test what it would look like on certain types of garments. You could test what it would look like on a specific type of person. And that can help you really nail the mock-up element. Because if you're designing for a specific customer avatar, if you're trying to put this on somebody that is more of a goth type person, then you can choose color palettes that look good with a specific mock-up targeting a specific type of person. So something that I just noticed that's pretty cool is that when you generate the mock-up, it chooses the color that is in the background of this canvas. In this instance, it's this one. And that is exactly what we've got on this shirt. Okay, so let's add a mock-up. Let's change it over to this very gothic looking girl with the blood, very, very thematic and Halloween. So I went ahead and I used the arrow keys to make it look just right. And as you can see, she's wearing the same background color that we had in the original template. So let's try making this into a white design. That pops decently well. And something that we can do is we can experiment with the text color if we wanted to change the text color. Now this is obviously a terrible choice, but I'm just trying to kind of show what you can do. And actually, how about we change the text color to be the same color as the lipstick? That ties it in a little bit. But the idea is that you can change the words, you can change the color palette, like you could put different words and it'll, it'll show up immediately on the mock-up. And having the color palette changes is going to be one of the more powerful features of using the mock-up generator. So we could even shift the color palettes overall and we could see what each of these types of color palettes would do on the mock-up. So there's a lot of options in this mock-up tool that will make it very easy to be targeted and cohesive with the way that the mockups show up. Okay, so here we are back in Kittle, and I'm gonna show you an example of one of the types of use cases that I consider to be very strong for Seadream 4. So in order to get here, all we need to do is click the Kittle AI icon over here, and then we would put in our prompt over here. I have this one pre-prepared so that we don't have to waste too much time. And then we can go ahead, I will generate four images so you can see what I'm talking about. And Seadream 4 is much stronger at certain types of images than it is at others. Anything that has an artistic element can be done quite well within Seadream. Okay, so here we are. We had a watercolor clip art set and it is a Christmas themed one. And if we look at each of these images, we can see the coquette bows. We have this cute little reindeer, cute gingerbread men, and we have 
the holiday ornaments and the different types of cake. And as you can see, we could easily take this, we can upscale it, we could remove the background. And this watercolor style is something that Sea Dream does quite well. So let's go into another example of what I think Sea Dream could do well. And it is a, another type of watercolor design. This one will be much more suitable to things like wall art. Okay, and here we go. We've got this artistic watercolor scene. It's very Venetian. And if we scroll through, we see a few different takes of the same scene. And they all have a pretty good styling suitable for wall art, can be used in isolation for different purposes. I can easily see using something like this to make some kind of Tumblr wrap if we use generative fill within Photoshop. So if you pick the right use case for Sea Dream 4, it can outperform some of the other Premiere models. Okay, so that was a rundown of the Sea Dream 4 image generator as well as the new Kittle mockup feature. And I have to say that I really like the direction that Kittle is going with some of these new features, integrating things more wholly into the AI workflows and having it feel more like a flowchart that's repeatable so you know exactly where you're going, and now you can get instant feedback into what it would look like within a mock-up. And having such a strong image generator around certain types of images is just another strong addition to an already strong tool. So if you're interested in checking any of these out, there is a free plan for Kittle. All you have to do is click the link below. And I also have a coupon code in the description. So check it out, give it a whirl, and I will see you in the next video.